No Jumper, coolest podcast in the world, and today we have a much anticipated and requested interview. Flacco has managed to get Reza Islam in the building. I'm very, very excited to have you here. Much respect, dude. How you doing, man? Oh, man, I'm doing well. It's it's, uh, it's an honor to be here. This is going to be very interesting, very, to say the least. Very interesting. And, you know, no, we, he just asked me, you own your own network, right? In the sense that... He's concerned. Maybe he says something. It doesn't air. Maybe mm-hmm. there's some corporate overlords that mm-hmm. he doesn't know about. And then it turns out that this doesn't come out. Let me tell you, if someone was going to get canceled for their opinions, this guy Flacco right here already would have got got. <laughs> well, one, man, yeah, shout sense. out G Perico because he definitely contacted oh, me. Oh, that's my oh, brother. Oh, he did? Okay. Yeah, cool. yes, contacted sir. me and then I let it right to this man because I know how important yeah. this is. Yes, sir. Yeah. yeah. Appreciate you, brother. For that. Yes, sir. Man, man. Yes, sir. Yo, yo, like we done had probably... Just about every controversial right person here, but I think that this brother here, it's not just because he's he's like controversial, mm-hmm. right? Because they're never afraid of the lie. Correct. It's when you come and you are an intellectual brother, just like you said, like they're not afraid of black extremists. Correct. They are afraid of black intellectuals. Correct. Right. So why do you think that you've been just ostracized, treated treated like a pariah on all these social media sites, man? Uh, one, being a black man in America, number one, who's not only aware of the information, but who has it factual, not conjecture, not theory, but actual understanding of what conspiracies are, uh, being articulate enough to say it, not being funded nor sponsored nor owned by anyone who will prevent you from saying it or spreading it and doing it unapologetically. Pretty much that alone will make you uh, a threat. doesn't matter what you wear. doesn't matter what you call yourself. doesn't matter what religious background you claim to be a part of or whatever group. If you have enough influence over the people to where you can communicate ideas, information strategically that will wake them up in no limit of time, 60 seconds to be exact, Mm -hmm. it will make them the overlords, the powers that be say, okay, this individual is a problem and anyone like him and or her is a problem and they need to be shut down, censored. We need to make sure that no one hears them. Let, let me just throw this in there, just to, to give a, us a, a, not a hypothetical, but an actual real world example. When the January 6th shit was going down yes. and, and the social media companies all sort of came together to ban Trump mm-hmm. from the platform, this is like one of the most that was critical. concentrated <laughs> efforts that they, uh, you know, and they found a reason that at the time certainly seemed like it was, uh, you know, reasonable. Mm-hmm. How did you feel watching that unfold? And, you know, I'm sure you have your own personal feelings about Donald Trump, but just the fact that they were able to do that in general. Sure. Well, first of all, I'll say this. Uh, I like Donald Trump. Everybody's watching. Don't trip. All right. So <laughs> Flacco's I like, like, hell yeah. Right, right, right. <laughs> I like Donald Trump. And, and not for the reasons that many others may like him or, or may be the same, but because I want a person to be honest with me. If you don't like me, tell me you don't like me. I, I don't need you to sit here and smile on my face, stab me in the back as we have been victims of for quite some time. Tell me how you really feel. But the main thing when it comes to January 6th is that I noticed This is a person who was the actual active sitting president of an entire nation. You can censor the president of a nation and no one is going to question exactly what the implications of that would be down the line for all the rest of us. See, I wasn't looking at, okay, if it was right or wrong. I was looking at the fact of you you just censored the president Mm. of the United States. What does that mean for anyone else below him? All of us. Anything that we're going to say. Freedom of speech, right? The First Amendment, freedom of religion, speech, press, petition, assembly. Okay, so... What does that mean? Mm -hmm. If you can censor the president of the actual country, what does that mean? So, again, at that point, I don't care if he's white or black, Republican, Democrat, Donald Trump. I don't give a damn. You just censored the president, which means I have no chance (laughs) on these social media platforms. I'm looking at it from that perspective. Nothing else really mattered at that moment. Is there an ideology so dangerous that it should be acceptable for it to be banned from social media platforms? Like, would you? Would, I, I'm pretty sure like the KKK is banned from Twitter for the most right. part, or like, but but I also hear that like the Taliban isn't like like because <laughs> w- w- they're partly funded by the U.S. government. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. I, I mean, <laughs> like when you look at that, like, do you think that the the clan should be able to have like a thriving hundred thousand person group on Facebook, and Facebook should just be forced to allow them to do that? Well, they do. It's called the Republican Party <laughs> well, and the Democratic <laughs> Party and all the parties. I mean, if you really want to go there, it's called Congress. It's I mean, <laughs> listen, one main thing that I don't do is I don't go into the blatant, overt things because that's not how the powers that be move anymore. It's not blatant and overt to a degree. Some people will say, OK, this is blatant. This is obvious. But the people who wear the robes, who are judges, the people who wear the medical doctor robes, the people who handle the policies, they are the ideology. A lot of them happen to be black-faced white supremacists now. Mm. 
Okay, so this, this, this basically, what we're looking for is the wrong target. That's my point. We have to look deeper into this. This is why they don't like extreme intellectuals, brother, because we go to the root of a thing. That's what the word radical really means in essence is to go to the root of something. Mm. You are radical. You're crazy. Why? Because I'm not going to compromise my, my beliefs, number one. Two, I'm not going to just accept what you give me. Number three, I'm going to question everything about you and what you say. And the main thing I'm going to question is your motive. So the, the thing we have to look at is who is running it for real? And when you look at that all the way beyond the labels, beyond the religions, beyond the gender ideological pseudo scientific nonsense, and of course, beyond the, I would say, political parties, you see who really runs it. And that's why they don't want people to talk, because you're going to make people think above all the nonsense. All those things divide people. When you say international bankers, when you start going to who pays who, where is the money coming from? Follow the money. Then you'll find out who owns everything. And at that point, then things will change. I got a question for you. Um... You just sitting here on this platform. I will just, you know, how do you feel, you know, sitting next to him, a uh, white man on this platform who happens to be an atheist? And mm, um, also, <laughs> you know, a lot of people saying that he's a culture vulture and you sitting here. Like, how do you deal he's with that? He's the main person saying it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how do you deal with that? <laughs> Very simple. Uh, number one, I have to look at your actions. Number one, he's white. Obvious. Happens. Welcome to America. Welcome to the world. It's 2022. Man is. <laughs> right. White. I mean, it happens. People Absolutely. are white and black, getting married, having children. It, it's a reality. What I look at is your motive. And I look at what you do with your relationship with my people. Mm. If you use that connection to damage the people, you got to be called out. Do I trust white people as a group? No, never will. <laughs> And there's nothing you can tell me that will convince me of that. But I don't need to throw that in your face when we're doing things that can go towards benefiting the human family. But it wouldn't really be fair to say you trust any group, right? Like if I were to say I trust women, I trust white people, I trust black people. It's like right. Gen generalizations kind of silly, are not right? intelligent yeah. at all when you generalize unless it's about good things like every human being breathes oxygen. Right. Okay. Right. Or we need air. Okay. Those are positive generalizations. Mm -hmm. But no. And, and again, I have to make that very clear so that when I sit down with people, you know where I stand. I know where you stand. But for him to have this platform and for those of us to get on here to have these type of dialogues, I could go back to that old way of thinking. But then again, you have a black militant member of the Nation of Islam. Let's make this very clear. Raw. Sitting next to this white dude. And we're going to agree on a lot of points. Mm. You happen to be an atheist. I happen to know that a lot of atheists are very logical. Mm. And it's very sad because a lot of people who are religious are fanatical and they're dogmatic and they're not logical. They don't know how to think. They go buy books not in them. They push things that they've heard onto people. They don't know how to apply things in real life. For a lot of them, not the majority, I'm not just blanketing our people. And I'm saying this is in Islam, this is in Christianity, this is Judaism, this is in Taoism, this is in Buddhism. This is in all of the faiths. The Honorable Minister Farrakhan said that Satan has infected all religions. That's number one. So when you go into all of these religious philosophies, think you're better because you have a different label than I do. Number one, you just prove you don't know nothing about your own religious belief. That's number one. A lot of atheists simply don't believe that there is a higher power to a degree. They believe in science. Well, if you believe in science, then you're literally believing in the seen power that is powered by the unseen source. So you believe in God, whether you know it or not. You can call it mathematics. You can call it the universe. You can call it any one of those things. But you just don't want to give it that certain label. That's cool with me. I'm cool with that. Literally, I've had conversations with plenty of atheists, and we agree on a majority of topics. Why? Because the Honorable Mr. Farrakhan said we should argue over religion after we're free. The majority of what's going on right now is because of people who confess or profess to believe in some kind of God, but they don't actually carry it out in their actions. They're too busy doing things that go against what they say they believe. Because the weird thing about being an atheist is that you can agree with most serious religious people because... Like a, a Muslim disagrees with all of the other religions, right? Mm -hmm. I just add one more Sometimes. religion to the mix. You know, mm -hmm. like I'm sure there's plenty of stuff that overlaps or that you take take notes from or whatever. But, you know, like me having a conversation with like a very, very strict Jew. I mean, we both agree on the idea that all the other religions got it fucked up, right? <laughs> <laughs> got a lot in common and we agree versa, on 99% and, of shit and vice versa it, it may be the same with other people and other religious groups but I, I will tell you this I've had conversations with people from every religious group that I just named and many that I have not named mm. and we come to the reality of what is happening in the world today religions have been behind or should I say the devil way of activating what you believe to be your religion has been behind the majority of lives lost on planet earth 
people who have used the name of Islam and have done devilish work. People have used the name of Christianity to have done devilish work. People have used the name of Judaism and practice real devil stuff. And they say, this is the God I believe in. But you say you believe in this religion. And if that is what your religion teaches, then that's not a religion that can be used. That is not good practice of religion. That is a devil work. And that is dirty practice of religion. That, let me answer this, because one thing I like about having somebody like Flacco on the podcast, and I will give you some time to talk at some point here. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 over no, your no, ass. no, no, but, uh, no. It's because a lot of times the media acts as if black people are supposed to be a monolith and have the same progressive opinions about everything. And if you've ever spent any time around black people, you know that that's total bullshit. <laughs> and so a lot of times people act like Flacco has done this like massive disservice to his people by existing because he has some right leaning opinions to say the least. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you how do you feel about that? Because it feels like that facade is really kind of uh, rubbing off because mm. people are starting to think for themselves more. Well, I'll say the first thing is uh, when you're dealing with a group of people who do not know who they are, what their original practice of religion was and or is, they don't have their original names, they don't have their original culture, they don't know what the hell is going on anyway. Mm. That's point number one. I'm saying this to sober us and humble us as black folk. You don't have a monolithic belief because you don't even know what that is. You, many of us have taken on the ideology, the identity, the names, the cultures of people who conquered us. That's just very plain, simple, number one. And then number two, once we got out of that in pieces and areas and we go into certain areas, we get a religion here. We All right, some of us are Catholic, some of us are agnostic, some of us are Buddhist, some of us are, you know, Taoist here, some of us are Muslim here. It's all of these things because we're trying to find ourselves. One thing I will say is that us as a people have to come together and agree that one, we are one people, whether if we choose to agree with that or not. Number two, the enemy knows that we are one people, so we should actually reflect a little more intelligence than he does. Mm -hmm. If he knows I'm a part of you and we're brothers. Maybe we should get on that same page too Absolutely. because he's united while we're divided. What the hell? What sense does that make? Your enemy knows you're the same. Maybe culturally different, different parts, you know, different parts of geography. Okay, sure, but you a nigga. And let's make this clear according Absolutely. to this system. So if they say that, okay, then maybe we should get on the same page and find out what we agree on rather than the things that divide us. It's just really that plain and simple for me. I don't need to force you to say, you a Muslim. You know the word Muslim means one who submits to do the will of God. It's actually an action. It's a title. It's not, it's what that is. All right, so it, it compliments anyone who says, I believe in doing what the Most High wants us to do. I believe in doing what the universe says is best. I believe in what goes around comes around. I believe in you got what you gave. All these scientific principles, the word Muslim literally means simply that, just so you know. But I'm not going to say, I'm a Catholic, you need to be a Catholic. I'm Muslim, you need to be a Muslim. There's no compulsion in what we do. Mm -hmm. Or sh should I say, there should not be. And that's the problem at this point. We should find out what we agree on. We're being murdered by our own people and by what's called race soldiers, also known as police officers, also known as domestic terrorists under Title 18, subsection 5 of the United States Code. We are being killed by other people. We have agricultural issues. Most of us don't know how to farm. We don't know how to cook properly. Uh, we have all of these chemicals in the old pipes in our cities. We have issues dealing with how we raise our own children. We don't know what to do with our own nutrition, how to properly eat, how to properly exercise. We have all these different issues from different diseases, STDs, including heart disease. We have too many problems. We don't own enough banks. We don't own our own schools. We don't have, I don't understand. But you know, in the ghetto, it's just like, I don't see why we wouldn't follow it. I mean, the loyalty, the camaraderie, um, the, the togetherness, everything that you guys like, just the morals, like everything that you teach, why is it so hard for just, you know, in Los Angeles in particular, because I'm from Los Angeles, for mm -hmm. us not to get together on that train and believe, you know, because I know I know for sure it's like a bad stigma over the nation if I'm in the ghetto, if I'm talking to my homies or anybody like that. And it's just like, OK, like the nation is good, but it's just like it's bad at the same time. Like, how, like why is it so hard to, you know, get through to us? Well, first thing is. I'll say it isn't as hard as we thought it was. And we're doing a lot more. We, meaning us as a people, are doing a lot more positive than we know. It's just not being promoted as much as the nonsense is. If we promoted every week all the different, for example, activists, brothers and sisters who are former gang members right now, Bloods, Crips, and all that, who turn their lives around and have different programs they created down here in the hood. Tons of them. We have the um, Upfest movement that we have in the Nation of Islam, which is the United in Peace movement. We've been riding for peace at the end of each month for nearly 10 years, bringing down the crime within the inner cities, not only from Watts to Compton to L.A., Long Beach, South Central, all the way around, literally bringing down the crime. Mayors have been acknowledging that. City councils all across in different cities and states have been saying, can you bring that out here? We come together with Bloods, Crips, Mexicans, Black folk. 
lowriders, Corvette clubs, Harley Davidsons. At the end of every month, we've been doing that. We give out food. We are ending gang wars, bringing truces and making sure that we maintain and help them to be maintained. This is going on all the time. But if we don't promote it, then the idea doesn't get put out in the ethers of the universe and people don't have it in their minds so they think it doesn't exist. There's a lot more positive going on than what we know. So the thing is, number one, we have to promote more of it. That's the first thing. So that people see, oh, it does exist. Oh, damn, I don't know that. Mm -hmm. And then they'll say, okay, you know what? I guess we can, you know, find some, some agreement. And let's, let's do something positive because I didn't know it could actually be done. I don't know a Muslim could sit next to an atheist and be cool. Or a brother, black man, FBA, whatever you want to call it, could sit next to a brother who's from... A tethered you know, African. A t- <laughs> Yo, I, yeah. like, that's one thing I was wondering. <laughs> That's one thing Shout I was our brother Tariq. I know. Yeah, when, when you that's my Tariq brother. And he, <laughs> I love Tariq. Yeah, that's coming for sure. Dude, I'm already know it. I know Trey. Like you jump yeah. right there. Go ahead, yeah. sir. Is, is that divisive? You think when you hear Tariq really like kind of divide black people between like immigrants and FBAs? Like like, do you think that that's a useful framework to view things through? Well, first of all, I know we can't necessarily be more divided than we've been in history. I, I'm sorry to say that, but we we it's already reached its apex, its climax, yeah. the top. That's number one. Number two. I know what he's doing is primarily focusing on us here because that's what we need to do. It's focus on our people here before we go help other people. So that's number that's number two. Number three, it can be divisive if we focus more attention on pointing at the differences rather than the similarities. Mm. And that's what anybody, that's not just with Tariq or myself or you, that's with anybody. We got differences. Yeah. That's a fact. Fried chicken versus Jolof. Yeah. Stop playing. Exactly. Right? And no, but that's, it's a cultural thing to it. And it's like, I don't care for either too much, but that's something that could be, we'll see. And it's like, uh, okay, it's, it's the comedy side of it now. Okay, now it's like, okay, cool. People get into that, but then you have others who say, okay, well, you have different things that you eat or dance or music or cultural paintings that reflect what we have over here too. Okay, so we can just find more things that we have in common. Mm-hmm. It's just that simple. So it can be divisive. That is a fact. But we need to focus more on what brings us together and unites us than what separates us. And I see Tariq do that too. That doesn't get promoted as much where he does. Oh yeah. Let's talk about the connections we have because we have a connection do you to think, the motherland. You think Tariq's right that only the foundational black Americans should uh, participate in the hypothetical reparations? Primarily. At, damn right. What are you talking about? Okay. What you, yeah, well, wait, no, no, wait, oh, wait, wait, wait. Are you saying as far as who has to get paid or pay yeah, back? He feels or, like, the, like the foundational black Americans are the only people who should be getting reparations if there ever are reparations. Well, I said the first thing is anyone who was dealt an injustice by the United States government where it was calculated and it was intentional should receive their just due. However, we just so happen to be the number one group of people who do not receive are just do. And at that point now, it's very disrespectful. The Asians receive theirs. The Jewish state of Israel receives eight to $10 billion off the top every year on the year since the mid-1940s, and their Holocaust didn't even happen here. Are you telling me the Chinese received theirs? Not a problem. The Italians, because you hung 11 of them off the coast, they received some too. All the rest of these people get their bag. But when it comes to us, those who built the nation, quite literally, where there are other people who added certain pieces. Sure, America brought in people and forced them to do certain things. Internment camps for the Japanese, Chinese, different people, all that existed. The natives, you put them on reservations, you killed off a large percentage of them because of smallpox and blankets. General Amherst, who said, aren't you cold? Don't you need blankets? And you killed off them and you said, I want to take the mineral well, take the oil, etc., etc. To this very day on reservations, they are suffering to the tune to where there is rape running rampant, crystal meth addiction, alcoholism. But we have all of this happening in the black community as well. And you don't give a damn about black folk. Why? Because they still use us as a commodity today. They still need us today in the prisons today. They have insurance policies, not only on rappers, but on prisoners today. It's all happening at this moment. So I can't acknowledge you because I'm still using you. I'm still benefiting from you. So I I can't. It's a conflict of interest (laughs) financially. So maybe down the line is their intention. We may we may give you something back and they're going to say this. We can't afford it because they're so far I calculated that they owe us between 50 to 52 trillion dollars. And that's just uh, University of Ottawa over in Canada. One of the professors just calculated eight dollars an hour, you know, for all the hours of free labor. Boom, boom, boom. Calculated that for roughly, I think, over 100 years. And they came up with that figure for all of the over 40 million of us, et cetera. Um, And the numbers, please fact check those numbers, but that's the idea. And they said, that's roughly the amount that we are owed. And they said, we don't, we can't afford it. Well, I'm sorry to tell you this, but didn't you just send Kiev, Ukraine over 80 uh, billion billion dollars? Yeah. Didn't you send 
more money after that? Didn't you send money to Afghanistan for some Didn't you send? You're sending money everywhere, but you're saying you can't afford it. No, print some more. Mm. Print some more. And then, yeah. and not only that, but it's the land, by the way. So we're, we're going to get into that conversation. Land, but yeah. yes, we should for sure receive our just due because everyone else has received theirs or are going to receive theirs. So we for sure deserve to have our just due. No, but like break that down though. So what would the reparations be about? So is it, so I think somebody says every black American would receive, well, black American, but, but like lineage, bloodline, yeah, and, right? Yeah. In, in a, in a, would have received $250,000 cash. Now, yeah. outside of the cash, what exactly should black folks be pushing for? Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad, specifically in the back of every final call newspaper, if you have not received a final call, that's where I get most of my news and uh, information yeah. from. 100% independent, black owned, the number one black uh, news article and publication on planet Earth, complete real news. On the back of that newspaper, you have point number, uh, you have all the different points. 12 points of what the Muslims want, what the Muslims believe, what we want when it comes to reparations. The Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad said eight to 10 states, with at least one state having an outlet to the sea, the ocean, so that we can enter into international trade and commerce. You already know bringing in ships and porting with different items, whether it's technology, food, or whatnot, so that we can supply that to our own people. That's number one. So land is the primary objective. You have land, 2,000 by 3,000 continents in the United States. Stop playing. And mm -hmm. people are saying, well, there's not enough. We're overpopulated. That's bull crap. That's a pseudo eugenic <laughs> ideology. Uh, ideological push to say there's not enough room for these human beings. That's a damn lie. Okay, that's actually an absolute lie. The vast majority of human beings in America can live in the state of Texas, if you want to be very specific mathematically. But eight to ten states is what he said. But let's say if we get three, that's fine. Which because, states would you take? Hmm, those Ideally. that are fertile and minerally rich, was the most honorable Elijah Muhammad said. Georgia being number one. You don't need your headphones. I yeah. don't? No. Okay, cool. Thank you. It's, yeah. All right. Does that hurt your ears? We no, can just, just take it off for you. It just keeps uh, flipping around. Uh, oh, Josh, okay. I have that problem. Just wanted to make sure I wasn't too... No, 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 level. Fine, yeah. Georgia being one of the top ones, Mississippi being another one, and I would say when it comes to the minerals, uh, Alabama mm. being fertile and minerally rich. Not only that, but because you know you said it, at least three. So those are three that I did mention, and the most honorable Elijah Mama talked about those. Him being from the South, and of course, as you know, the soil is far more rich, especially if you're looking at versus California. <laughs> Okay, you can you can plant virtually anything <laughs> out there in the South and it will be fruitful and give you a good return, for example. So that's the primary objective would be the land. And then outside of that, we can look at other things, because if you just give black folk, 40 million of us, 250,000, which I believe is probably uh, four or five times more than that, that we should so over a million yeah. per person. And they have it. But if you were to do that, they're just going to go out and spend money with corporations anyway. Right. But it would be as Dave Chappelle did on the racial draft, I believe. Mm -hmm. If we were to get reparations, since we were going to spend it so quickly, it will probably bring the greatest boom to the economy the United States has ever seen. <laughs> because we go spend it on cars and go pay off loans and do all that stuff. And so it would literally revitalize the economy. I mean, I'm just saying, if we want to be on an economical piece. So that's so far what I would think. Let me ask yeah. you this. You must have some love for America, right? Because you've chosen to try to amend America rather than like, branch off, go back to Africa, or create a, a separate nation or something like that. Like, do you think America could be the place that you want it to be? Is there something that about America that makes you want to continue to work here and, and build something here? My people, number one, uh, the lineage, number two, how we quite literally are the original owners, you could say, as it pertains to where it should go, you know, where the moral compass should go. And I'm, I'm talking about us in our natural state. I'm not talking about where we are right now, because a lot of us are not that wise. But all of these connections, we quite literally deserve this land. It's not a, mm. you know, I feel like this is mine. No, it, it, it is. Right. And because of that, anyone who comes here, for example, the 1828 Noah Webster's Dictionary and the definition of the word American stated, quote, copper colored people is an original American, but now applies to the descendants of Europeans, but originally applied to those who were here before Europeans. 1828, Noah Webster's Dictionary. Even Noah Webster knew. Black folk. All right, so he already, he was already saying that. So I love America, the people, my people first, the original people first, and the essence of what originated it. Even back then when it was called Turtle Island or Tula or Al Morocco or whatever you want to call it, all of these pieces, but I do not love nor do I care too much for the disgusting, degenerate, devil-minded, satanic system that is governing this government, that is seeking to attack men, women, children, putting black people at the bottom, rape, robbery, 
sex trafficking, organ trafficking that is being sponsored, allowed by this government on their watch, on their time, on their dime. I'm not interested in none of that. But when it comes to the people who want to seek justice, starting with mine and then all the way up to even white folks, because poor white people, this government don't care about them either. What should I Google if I want to learn about uh, the American government's sex trafficking? Uh, there's actually there's one primary website. I believe it's sextrafficking.org. Don't quote me on that, but it's similar to that website where they go the, over the statistics, how many people, the hot spots, which is Florida, Texas, Orange County in California, oh, wow. different things like that. Um, roughly how many people go missing every year, how it's in over 300 billion or over 300 million, I believe, uh, dollar industry. Like it's it's known. It's not even a secret. It's very well known, but it's stimulating America's economy. Oh. You said you said. Um that uh they need us black people they need us but it's an obvious war on black mm -hmm. america it's definitely an obvious war on us and then go back to what you were saying you know about donald trump and um deleting him off social media i mean mm -hmm. when the minister was deleted off social media i think mm -hmm. that scared Come me more than the donald trump you know absolutely mm -hmm. 2019 the honor women of schools farrakhan along with alex jones <laughs> So they got hit at the up. same time? Same exact time. Wow. They took Alex Jones, Minister Farrakhan, and one other person off at the exact same time because the war is for the hearts and minds of the people. So they have to remove those who have the biggest connection to the ears of the people. Mm. Alex Jones, who I was invited onto a show and I went on his show. Um, interesting, right? How was that? On point. Huh? We agreed on everything, shockingly enough, because he's been talking about this you know, since he's been uh, on on air and talk radio and all that, as well as the honorable Minister was Farrakhan. Been talking about this. The most honorable Elijah Muhammad way back in the 60s, talking about all the same stuff, too. But when he was removed from social media, that was the main the flag for call. me. That was a wake up. I, I already knew. Yeah, so when I saw that, I said, oh, OK, yeah. Then anyone else, one who follows him, who is effective over social media and then those who share his ideology, which is freedom, justice and equality. It's not, oh, I hate this person. Let me hate you. No, no. It's freedom, justice, equality for all, including white folks, but not at the demise of black people. Freedom, justice, and equality across the board. I have to expose who Satan is. I have to expose who runs this government. I have to expose who is attacking men, women, children. I, I have to. It is what he must do. That's just it. So they have to go after those people. That way, everybody else can be guided and misguided by the people who they set up and who they sponsor to misguide the people. It's just that simple. So I knew they were coming at your brother. I, I knew it was coming after me shortly after that. I was like, all right, I got maybe about two months. <laughs> Let me do as much as I can within that two months. Wait through, right? So now, now when I seen the minister get taken down, and that was the first time I thought, wait, hold up now, bro. Like, Alex Jones had the same thing, for example, that they both, both like, came for the international banking families yes. of, of Europe. Correct. And coincidentally enough, mm -hmm. whenever anybody... Speaks about those people. Come on, bro. They usually follow with a deactivation of Correct. all accounts. Why is that? Speak on that. Who is the international banking family <laughs> of Europe? And why do everybody get taken out whenever they speak on them? Oh, man. Everyone should read the book, uh, The Creature from Jekyll Island. Everyone should know about the meeting that took place off the coast of Jekyll Island in the early 1900s. Everyone should know about the Federal Reserve Act. Everyone should know about Woodrow Wilson. Everyone should know about J.P. Morgan. Everyone should know about the Carnegies, the Rothschilds, the Warburgs. Everyone should know about the Waltons. Everyone should know about the Vanderbilts. Everyone should know about these are the names of, you know, of course, the Rockefellers. Again, very critical uh, about the Rockefellers, John D. Rockefeller and all the rest of them, Dale Carnegie and the rest of them. You must know about these. Why? Because they shaped the modern world that we currently live in from the financial area to the educational system, to the agricultural system, to the very banking itself. They shaped it. So while a lot of us are arguing, we're not realizing the people who quite literally put this thing together are the ones who have perpetuated exactly where we are to this very moment. We argue over nonsense on a surface level. But if we both came together and said, hold on, let's sit down and really delve deep into where this thing came from, then we can say, oh, these people want to get rid of over 4 billion human beings on the planet, including white folk. That's not conspiracy theory. That is conspiracy fact. National Security Study Memorandum 200 under Dr. Henry Kissinger, 32nd Secretary of State under President Richard, Richard Nixon and Gerald Ford, authorized in 1974. After that, you had Global 2000, authorized under President Jimmy Carter. You have Zbigniew Brzezinski, who was... The advisor to Jimmy Carter, who said, quote, in earlier times, it was easier to kill a million people or pardon me, it was easier to control a million people than to physically kill a million people. He said, but today it is infinitely easier to kill a million people than it is to control, end quote. That's the mind of the advisor to the president. What does that mean? 
once you look at all of this, you realize the game is bigger. It's much bigger than just black and white now. Now we're dealing with, as you know, the Bible says or science says, principalities, rulers, spiritual wickedness in high places. They are not interested in having human beings on the planet who do not comply with them. Black, white, and all in between. They're not interested anymore. And the problem is social media backfired on them because it was supposed to trap us more and for us to give up more of our information so that they can trap us. But we started to Educate put, put some stuff up in there <laughs> and started waking people up. Now we're educating and now they're like, God damn it, we didn't expect it to happen like that. Or should I say so soon, which I wrote about in book number two, which is another reason why you brothers with these Rico charges, you should have read this book when it came out. But yeah. it's it's a real thing. How do you feel about those Rico the charges? charges. <laughs> and they said at the same time. Yeah, man. Hey, we both had it know, in mind. Huh? <laughs> because I've been watching and I'm, I'm going to say, you know, we understand ratings. Mm -hmm. But I caution those of us who have platforms and I caution those uh, of you with platforms that are, you know, on YouTube or larger with the millions of subscribers or more to be mindful that not only should the viewers be, you know, received because you're going to get those. But how you get the viewers is another thing. There are real people with real lives and they get on here because a lot of them are not too wise. They want to get seen. They want to just express the truth or they just say, you know what, I'm, I'm just talk. I'm gonna just speak my piece and they end up incriminating themselves, not realizing what they are saying is their truth. But what their truth happens to be is something that may or may not connect them to a criminal circumstance that could get them or people that they know arrested or put in jail, uh, even though it may have been indirect or unintentional. So the RICO charges that I'm saying is that many of us on these platforms, please just encourage the brothers and sisters when they get on here and they start talking about their private business. Stop them and say, you you know, bro, you, you don't have to go into that if you don't want to. Right. Because the majority of these platforms I'm witnessing is they ask a question and the moment people start confessing their criminal past, they just they, they don't stop them. They let them go. And it's like these platforms are being used and monitored by the FBI to incriminate people. But I don't think the YSL Rico involves yeah. anything from like interviews or anything like that. No. They did. Use it can the, be. They use the lyrics a little bit, but they really didn't mm -hmm. need the lyrics. It's mostly just like they have some pretty gnarly evidence of, it was, well, that, that they the, were a very dangerous street. Yeah, gang, that's the know? accountability side on the person who's talking. Right. Because mm -hmm. that's the other part. Don't get up here talking about that, thinking that you got to glorify that now. It's 2022. You, you ain't got to. I shot it, bro. Sorry, anybody can get a gun. Sorry, like that don't make you hard. <laughs> yeah, it, do, it doesn't. Just you don't have to do that because then well, yeah. you can't blame people who bring you on the show right. when you yeah. self-incriminate yourself. That's the other part. So it's twofold. It's the people who provide the platform and it's those who utilize it. We have to take responsibility because at that point now it's like you can't you can't blame these brothers if you get up here talking about that because once these recall charges come, which they are activating these recall charges, they're going to come. Be mindful. You can't blame anybody after a certain point. I just wanted to just kind of give that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, take a step back because you spoke on on but the platforms who would dive deeper and ask more questions, probing into their <laughs> criminal backgrounds. <laughs> now, you was on with a good brother called Corey Holcomb. Yes. Yes. And you Shout said something. Brother, 5150. Yes. Mm -hmm. And like you said something very profound. You said Vlad TV is a culture vulture and mm -hmm. a demon. Mm -hmm. Now, devil. let me just give you some like, yeah, a devil, right? Mm -hmm. You know, so like, here's some little, little background. I personally never had no issues with Vlad, right? Mm -hmm. But I think Adam posted, yo, I'm about to interview Vlad. Can somebody, you know, like, what should I ask him? And I asked him, yo, like, can you, you know, ask him, you know, to apologize to the minister mm -hmm. for lying on him? Correct. Which he did. And since then, I guess I'm public enemy to Vlad now, <laughs> right? <laughs> Vlad... Vlad fucking hates me now, right? He's gonna hate you even more yeah. after this. Did he talk uh, about you on the <laughs> academics podcast? No, 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 oh. no, 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 no. He's but, gonna hate you. Yeah, he's gonna hate that bullshit. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but yeah. So, one, could you just please break down what? Why mm -hmm. is Vlad a culture vulture and a mm -hmm. devil? And then also just speak on exactly what what he did to the minister. Sure. And why that was just so out of bounds? Absolutely. Well, the first thing is to Vlad. You already know. This is why you haven't brought me on. Don't invite me. Make this very clear to you until or unless you apologize for lying on the honorable minister was Farrakhan, taking out of context a specific phrase he said in the July 4th, 2020 address called the criterion when the minister was saying that those who are evil and wicked individuals going under different labels, Muslim, Christian, Jew, etc. He said we must hurl the stone of truth at falsehood until we knock out its brain. It's a metaphor. Hurl truth at falsehood until we knock out his brain. What he then said when he was interviewing D.L. Hughley, you as well, Mr. Hughley, 
do not invite me on. You already know, unless and or until you apologize. What he said was Minister Farrakhan said to hurl a stone at Jews. OK, now let me just say this. That's a feminine as hell. OK, that's a female dog way of behaving right there. Let me just say that as, as a man. You're talking about a man who was 88. An elder. You don't have to agree with everything he says. Fine. That's fine. But you don't have to lie on somebody. That's that's kind of you. You 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 you're soft. There's something wrong with you. That's what any one of us who get up here lying on somebody, especially an elder who is fighting for the freedom of the people, black, white, whatever you want to call it, would knock that off. So when he did that, that's when I went off on him. And then that's when you saw West Coast Cam said, I'm not going on. That's when you saw Godfrey Comedian say, I'm never, I'm never going back on. That's when you saw uh, Lord Jamar say, I'm never going back on, Vlad. Because oh, so you kind of started that whole thing? I don't know if I started it, but I do know I was one of the first people who went, on, went out there and said that. Because, it, again, we have to respect. You may not respect our elders or our leadership. Fine. I do. And we all should be like that. Because if people can openly disrespect our elders... Sure. Everybody disrespects people to a degree. I get that. But no, 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 no. There is a limit that we must make it very clear. This is an area that you will not cross right here. Pay respect, have respect. Even if you respectfully disagree, that's fine. Just do it respectfully. And once he was approached with that and we, we got to him, he knew he issued an apology, but it wasn't really an apology. It was oh, a technical difficulty. Like, yeah. OK, hold on now. No, <laughs> no, no, sir. You lied on this man. And you took his words completely out of context. Apologize. But when you have people who, frankly, white folks for the majority, but I do know a lot of white people who will apologize. But this one in particular, who is an atheist, but he's a Jew when it's convenient. Mm. All of a sudden, you not only don't feel that it's proper, but that it's even beneath you to apologize to Farrakhan. Listen, uh, Mr. Vladis, Vladislav. You should be very humble, and we all should. Just make it right. Simple as that. If you lie on someone, make it right. It's just that simple. But until then, like I said, don't invite me. And he's had members of the Nation of Islam on there, but he specifically hasn't invited me, especially after that. I said, don't, I don't want you to invite me. I'm not interested. I don't care about fame. I don't care about the views. Don't invite me on until and or unless you apologize to the Honorable Mr. Farrakhan. Now, you know, you even spoke on being militant, right? Mm-hmm. Now, when I think about militant, especially <laughs> especially in 2022, yeah. I think about poor white folks. Like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. For example. Militias, militias, yeah. Mm -hmm. The Trumpers, mm -hmm. they said, yo, if you think Trump is going to get impeached, my AK-47 tells me different. Yeah, there's plenty of videos like that. Oh, it was a lot of them. Right? Yeah, it was a lot of them. <laughs> Why do you think, as black folks, I don't see that same mindset with us? Especially when it comes to people like the minister. Mm -hmm. Do you think as black folks we've been metaphorically beaten into submission to where we don't even mm -hmm. think like that no more? Because, for example, if let's say um, if let's say somebody said that about Trump, Ooh. dumb boys is going that's to to wherever that man that at. That is a fact. I will say. Oh, no, you're going Well, yeah, I, I think that's it. leading back into what I was saying about yeah. being mm -hmm. morals and the camaraderie and stuff like that. But then they, you know, they definitely paint a picture about the nation in mm. particular. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, it's a, it's about, it's a, a lot reason. of bad things out there, especially one when it comes to Malcolm. That's course, how they get. That's how they get. That's the you. oldest. Yeah, like okay, <laughs> they 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 were responsible for killing Malcolm X. You guys made you, you uh, maybe we'll step back. Too. We will. You may. Oh, yeah. yes, 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 trust you guys we'll need to down. step yes. back for one. But yeah, go ahead. You can answer. I, I'll, I'll say it this way: propaganda works on the weak-minded, but even a strong-minded person, if you continue to beat them slowly, subtly with propaganda, lies, you know, different ways of behaving, images, slowly in music and film and movies and you know, different people talking about it, it will take effect on a person. Joseph Goebbels, who I believe was the minister of propaganda for Adolf Hitler, said, quote, if you tell a lie big enough, long enough, people will come to believe it, end of quote. He was pushing the big lie. So when you keep pushing the big lie about somebody, lie, 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 lie for years, years, and I'm talking about in movies and cartoons and everywhere, at a certain point, if it doesn't get our generation, it'll get the children. If it doesn't get our children, it'll get our grandchildren. This is how propaganda works. So with Donald Trump, 
He resurrected, as the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan said, he peeled back the onion of white civility. Because there's a lot of white folk who are racist and they want to be there. Exactly. Come on, Adam. You know what I'm talking about. Well, a lot of white people. <laughs> hey, the same white people that did not elect him on term number two, right? Right. No, true. So at least yeah. some percentage of you them came some around, who, right? Who are not, you got some white folks who talk real dirty about Donald Trump. I was like, damn. I mean, they, yeah. I don't even use the term cracker, but they did. I was Listen, like, yeah. I've, I voted for both Hillary Clinton and Joe Biden in order to express to the world how much I don't like wow, Donald Trump. That was so, a, you I had mean, to prove that point, huh? Hey, I, I sacrificed no, a lot right he there. He proved that point. Only to vote for another white man. <laughs> Wait, and, and a white woman. And a white like woman. He was, he was like, so listen, I'm with the ladies, you know, I'm with the veterans, everything. You did, you Hill did. dog. Right, right. Yeah. So yeah. The, the propaganda that has been pushed has affected our people so heavily. Then you mix that with some of our own people. You have envy and jealousy. Even going back to Malcolm's time, you had that going on. Then you mix that with a lot of people who just don't want to get right. Because a lot of our people are comfortable being, being mediocre. And I mean that. Comfortable being on Section 8. Comfortable being on food stamps. They don't want to change a damn thing. I'm not trying to work. You mean build my own city? Nigga, please. <laughs> Seriously. You have yeah. a lot. There's layers to this. It's not just one answer. There are layers to this thing. And when you really understand it, that's why the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan has been doing the work that he's been doing for 60 plus years. He's just sacrificed doing the work. We have to all do the work that Allah, God, the Most High, has blessed us to do. But I will say when it comes to Donald Trump, he, he connected with the one thing that enough white people have been suppressing. Mm -hmm. And that is, I don't want to be replaced. And that is what Dylan Storm Roof was saying. Mm -hmm. That's what... Kyle Rittenhouse was saying in their manifestos, they were all saying this, the great replacement, not theory, it's called the war of genetic annihilation. You're being bred out of existence because you're, you're genetically recessive, we're genetically dominant. This is not racism, this is science. It has nothing to do with my feelings. You had something called the vanishing white American that they were talking about on CNN, saying that by the year 2042, America's going to be a majority brown country. You had... You had uh, in Texas, the, right? Oh, a of course, brother. Uh, yo, so Texas throw, just, throw abortion in there too, uh, brother. I, listen, Texas just became so pretty much like they became like the first state where now the brown people are the largest group. It's forty percent brown, thirty nine percent white. How do you feel like again? I know white folks is gonna counter that somehow, man. How do you feel, or or like, what do you think the plan is gonna be to build the wall? <laughs> make sure <laughs> that's gotta be part of the plan. Right? Part of the, plan. <laughs> the prevention of being replaced. White folks, when they came here after King George and all of that, you know, Great Britain things, come over here, 13 colonies, boom, 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 America, 1776, all right. They took this not to give it back. They took this land not to borrow it. It wasn't a, oh, look, just give us 100 years and then we're going to go ahead and do our own thing. You know, we just need this little stimulus package. That's not what this is about. It was, this is what we're going to take. It's going to belong to us and our lineage and our posterity and forever and ever and ever. That was their goal. But the reality is you're losing numerical majority in America. You already lost it on the planet. You never had it. The majority of people are melanated black folks across the planet. We're the majority. We've never been the minority across the planet in America. However, we've been the minority. Hence the term minority. It's also a psychological trick to make you believe that you have no power and you shouldn't unite anybody and we're not strong because we're the minority, a bigger power, military force, etc. There's a whole lot of that that goes with that. But the point is they don't want to be replaced, number one. Number two, we they some of them, we're talking about the real racists. You, you, we're talking about like them, them ones that may make you feel kind of uncomfortable. All right, if you if you being genuine. All the white racists make me feel uncomfortable. There we go. Okay, cool. <laughs> there you go. So those who you're like, yo, bro, I'm not with. Okay, cool. Yeah. You have those who identify with Donald Trump's raw, racist, uncompromisingly. Look, I'm a businessman. I'm not a president. All right, grab her by the vagina. He said the P word is I don't give a damn about you. Mexicans are rapists. Black folks are lazy. Hell, matter of fact, hey, hit him in the head a little harder and we put him in police car. All of that, he sparked something that a lot of them have been saying finally. But let's be real. It's not just white people. There's a lot of black people Absolutely. and Mexicans who are who resonate with the fact that Donald Trump seems honest, even no, though that, he's actually no, probably the, the biggest point. liar that has ever well, served office in America. A whole lot. But, but what would you say to a, a Kanye, a The Baby, a WAC 100? All these people have kind of just mm -hmm. stated in recent memory that they support Donald Trump. Even <laughs> academics said it. I don't know. I don't know to what extent, if you were to quiz any of them about Donald Trump's policies, that they would really be able <laughs> actually, to tell you too oh, much, yeah. but... 
I'll quiz them about their identity, they wouldn't know too much. Um, I love us, but we don't know enough to even make statements like that. We get a little money. We get above our people, or so we think. We're not in the hood no more. We lost the idea of what it feels like to Who's not eat too much. Growth? We start getting to the point to where we like, okay, cool. I'm rubbing shoulders with these people. I got a lot of money here. Boom, boom, boom. And you think that because you have more money, that makes you closer to an elite. No, it doesn't. You're a rich Negro. Every one of us will receive our N-word wake-up call. You will always receive that. You make the wrong person irritated. You will be reminded of exactly who you are. Every one of us. I don't give a damn how much money you have because you're a millionaire and you can't speak the truth. You are still a slave. You're just rich. You got more slave masters in your bank account. That's the only difference between you and me. Mm. But I can speak the truth where you can't. I would never trade places. Ever. But at that point, we have to be mindful that humility is something that we all need to receive. Whether if you're rich, you're poor, whatever you want to call it. We have to sit down, learn our history and learn the history and then be willing to take responsibility and hold ourselves accountable for the things that we do and the things that we fail to do. That's for all of them, because Donald Trump, yes, he awakened a lot within a lot of people. But like I said, that specific core group of the racist evil ones. So you said going to pull up on people if they threatened to impeach them or whatever. And they were it was a lot of videos on <laughs> a lot of people with mm. their guns. They didn't give a damn. Mm. They mm. glasses off. Absolutely. They said, come get me. You know where I'm at. Boom, boom, boom. It's because. That's what they want. And guess what? I ain't mad at them. <laughs> That's their great white hope. Mm -hmm. Go have them. They're supposed to do that. That's, a, that's what you're supposed But guess what? We're supposed to do the same as you were saying. But the propaganda has made us weaker to where we don't even trust our own people. Donald Trump has been accused of rape for over 15 women, just so you know, for example, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> ain't nobody bringing that up. No, yeah. let's just they, they not even. they like, okay, and that's still my man. Why aren't we the same? Did See, you, now, now mind you, I'm not just fine that, so let's get that clear. Right. That's terrible. No matter who does it and anyone who does it deserves yeah. the consequences, period. However, I'm just saying there's a difference in how we treat our own versus how everyone treats their own. So we should be on cold more with our people. If they're wrong, we need to check our own people. That's the point. But we also need to do right by our people and stick with each other. You know, as long as we can. Did you see the article in the New York Times about how, I guess, they uncovered that there was, like, Russian state-sponsored interference to basically paint Linda Sarsour as an anti-Semite? For people who don't mm -hmm. know, she was, like, one of the leaders of the Women's March. Mm -hmm. She's Muslim. Mm -hmm. They basically, like, figured out in their whole disinformation campaigns that calling her an anti-Semite was very, very effective in Correct. terms of drawing a lot of controversy online mm -hmm. and her career has really been like pretty much hobbled and the women's march like evaporated <laughs> as a result of all this how do, how do you feel when you see that Cause that really shows you like the power of information and yes. the idea that bad actors could amplify a message so much and I'm not, I'm not saying that there weren't legitimate grievances with her or whatever obviously this was popular with people because mm -hmm. some percentage of real people also agreed with her but the russian thing is kind of crazy <laughs> to think that they could weaponize our information like that right? and i find it funny all of a sudden america's talking about russia 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 when you sold our information to the national bankers you've been spying on us since 9 11 with the patriot act what the hell are you talking about see i don't get into that nonsense it's like well, russia calm down let's go back <laughs> over here america what the hell are you doing <laughs> What have you been doing? Mm -hmm. You've been spying on us with all social media platforms since the very first one called Six Degrees. Mm -hmm. That's before MySpace, before Photo Bucket was added to MySpace, before Facebook, before Instagram, before all of those, America sold the access to the minds of the people to vested interest groups, private corporations, the military, the CIA, and the FBI so that we could be investigated in a way where we would accept it. We would be infiltrated in a way where we would accept it. You pointing to Russia? Hold on. Con again. Again. White folks have their problems. Fine. But when it comes to America, I'm looking at what you have done to the people here. They always want to have us look at some boogeyman out there. You the boogeyman. <laughs> Your policies that have been very detrimental to the freedoms of the American people, white, black, and everyone all in between. You have done this. You have violated all of the constitutional rights of the people on a consistent basis in a way where we would accept it and saying it is for the greater good. Domestic terrorists and over $40 billion security system. And you're telling me that all of a sudden there's some terrorists in America? No, because you plan to do what you then did, 9-11, all of that. Yes, 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 yes. It's all a fact. And then once that occurred, you wanted to demonize somebody so that the American people would join your side and say, yeah, go get them. And it's like, when the hell have they come over here and beat us up, bro? I need to know this. Black folks, when did they come to your neighborhood and do anything to you? Stop listening to a devil about who's an angel and who's not. I'm not listening to you. If you are a known liar, why the hell would I listen to you? I should be questioning you. Oh, really? Iraq? What do they have over there that you want? That should have been the first question. What they got that you want? 
Later I mean, on, George Bush said Iraq had nothing oil. to do with it. <laughs> I think I okay. think a lot of you know the community is 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 built on fear. It's mm-hmm. definitely built on fear. I need to go back to that by the way with the with the last piece on the rush thing and let's also on that. But go ahead. All right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's yeah. just a lot of information. Definitely, I think our community is built on fear. Um, I forgot what the fuck I was finna say, but uh, <laughs> my bad, brother. My bad. My bad. <laughs> yeah, you was finna do it, but yeah, our community is built on fear. That's I mean, fact. but and I think going back to what you were saying too about you know. Um, being humbled. I, did you did they give you that humbling moment? You know what I'm saying? When they put you in jail, did they try to like, you know Yeah, what happened? Is that like a message that they try to this. give our community? You feel me? Mm-hmm. Like you like, you know what, we're gonna put him in jail and this mm-hmm. is we're gonna have one of our black leaders here, you know. And too, like with that, you know, in that question, I'm just like, are we worried about you know our black leaders and people like that? You, that's another thing built on fear. Like I, we fear Absolutely. to speak out because our black leaders that do speak out, you know, something always happens to them. You know, what did you get arrested example, for? I didn't even know about this. It was contempt of court for a case has been going on for nearly seven years. Of course, I'm not going to speak on it here, but if I'm a black man fighting against the system of white supremacy and I don't have a case, am I really a black leader? <laughs> am I really a? Am I really doing something? And LK had a case. No, come on, brother. We all, all of all. Come on, we all. So again, that's that's why I don't really. That's not a um, an issue for me to talk about. That yeah, I got a court case. I've been going over seven years. Am I guilty? Nope. You'll mm-hmm. see. But we'll let that happen. Uh, it was contempt of court. Okay. I basically said to the judge. I, I basically called him a terrorist. All right. So, so you know, um, <laughs> I, I did. Right. That, yeah. So I earned that one. Got it. Okay. And when I went in. I saw so many people in there who I knew, and when they saw me come in, they said, oh, hell no, if you in here, we ain't never getting out. That's what <laughs> right. the joke was. Sad, but it was funny, but sad at the same time. And I said, you know, it wasn't a humbling moment. It was just a realization that, oh, Satan is really real. Cool. It was just another layer to it. I wasn't tripping because a, a clean heart can't get hurt. If you're not guilty of something, you're not guilty of it. I don't care who comes against you. If you're not guilty of that thing, then you're not. So it wasn't really a, a trip for me, but it also did let me know that I should be slightly more mindful about the tactics, about the maneuvers, about being a little more calculated with how we do things, of course. So I wouldn't say it wasn't necessarily humbling, but it put things into a more sharp perspective for me. Yeah, because you, like you said, you they, everybody, you're going to get that nigga moment. They oh, gonna yeah. Te- they going to teach you. So, you know, yeah, putting things in perspective for me too and learning how to, you know, mm-hmm. voice Things a little bit different, mm-hmm. like that shit. You do. <laughs> what, what was the last thing you want to say about the Women's March topic? The the strategic manipulation of social media. Once Mark Zuckerberg and the agents of the CIA and the FBI Department of Defense came together and they met, and they were looking at how they could use social media to their advantage because you're pretty much providing all the information for them. So it's the, this kind of cut like 90% of the work for the U.S. government when it comes to who they need to investigate, where they need to go. Hell, what do you eat? What kind of car do you drive? You told them everything. You literally volunteered. It's a psychological game, which is why one of the top employees inside of the Department of Defense and inside the U.S. government are psychologists because they must study the minds of the people. Why did you put a question on social media that says, what's on your mind? And why did you answer it? Why do you keep answering that? So at a certain point, you can't blame them because you just fell into the game. So they know how to manipulate the minds of the people when you go up against them. But the people who witness your work long enough, and if your record is solid enough, then it won't necessarily affect too many of them. But you got you to gotta be out here being sincere and really doing the work. That's the only thing I will say, because really, that's where God intervenes. Like, no, no, no. The people, they seen your work. They know you've been out here for years doing this. Boom, boom. So no, no amount of lies will penetrate the minds of those who sincerely know and they feel. They feel you. They seen you. They, they witnessed you in person doing this over and over again. So, you know, but when they what they did with her was um, very strategic, very wicked. And the anti-Semitic title is a trick that is used for people who criticize the negative things that people do call themselves Jews. Just like people who call themselves Muslims do evil stuff. People who call themselves Christians do evil stuff. No, you're not a Jew. You're not a Muslim. You're not a Christian. You're a devil. Using that name. And you're really putting dirt on it. Mm. Judaism, Christianity. Is like, no, it already has dirt on it and blood in it. On, on all of them. But you are falsely representing it. Making it seem as though you're doing good but you're doing evil under that name. And that's for everybody in every religious group in every single area. So when they use that, it was effective because, yes, there there is this inordinate amount of control. Mm. 
And it's people who are Arab, it's people who are Muslim, it's people who are Jewish, people all the different religious groups and all that who happen to own parts of media and banking in different religious groups. So I got a question. How do you feel about seeing these protests overseas where there are all these women burning their hijabs? I haven't seen that. I haven't um, seen that. I'm, I can't even forget what I country. don't doubt it, though. No, no, right. So pretty much, like, uh, so it was Iran. So yeah, pretty yeah. much oh, gotcha. a yeah. 22-year-old female mm -hmm. got uh, arrested because there's a hijab rule there. Mm -hmm. And while in custody of like the moral police, I think she was murdered mm. or or she died. I right, don't know right, if she right, was right. murdered or not, but she died in custody. Right. So now females were, were uh, at her funeral saying uh, death to the dictator and, uh. and taking off their hijabs. Mm. Do you think that because of things <laughs> that go on in the Middle East, that, de that that gives Muslims a bad name all across the board? Very interesting. Arabism and Islam are two different things. Mm. Let's make this clear. Islam is the religion. Being an Arab is a culture. So a lot of people mix up the culture with the practice of the religion. Like when you're black, you're Muslim. You're not a real Muslim. You don't have a, you don't wear a jelly bee. Uh, you mm -hmm. don't have a beard. Okay, bro, I'm black. I'm from Compton. The hell are you talking about? <laughs> like, I mean, let's make this clear. We, I'm not trying to be right. an Arab. You an Arab. Go over there. I mean, yeah. respectfully. Let's stop. And don't, <laughs> don't put yourself on me. I'm not going to put myself on you. Respect the culture. But things that happen in the Middle East... As long as they benefit the vested interests of America, minerals, diamonds, oil, America's cool with it. So let's make this clear. America's cool with that. They don't give a damn about women. In an Arab culture, there are a lot of things that are damaging to women. Can't drive. Can't pray in the mosque. Can't be a imam in the mosque. Dr. Ava Muhammad, may Allah be pleased with our sister, who is the national spokeswoman she just made a transition, but I'm saying is because her essence will, will always be here. Is a national spokesperson for the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. One of the first women imams in the whole world of Islam. Wow. On the planet. That was a message. Because you cannot suppress women and expect to be respected by men or by anyone, by governments. But in those cultures, that's been a problem. Was that backlash? What you said? Did say, you have? Did you get backlash for having doing that? Being have? I mean, the only. I believe woman? yes. I believe the minister did receive some backlash because the women women are looked at as second, third class citizens in some of these Arab cultures. That's that's just the fact. They're really looked at as you can't come in the mosque. You sit over here, pray over there. You're supposed to be in the house cooking, cleaning. Don't do. I mean, there's a lot of things that are like, yo, that's not cool. But I will say that's not your version of the religion. No, clearly. <laughs> Tell a black woman to walk 10 paces behind you, see what happens. No. No. Every angle, no. Okay, yeah, so. No, absolutely not. No, definitely not. Um, but I, I will say also to defend the, the part of the Muslim countries um, that is good, because there's, there are some very, very good things. Muslim nations have been some of the only ones to elect women as heads of state in at least five Muslim countries. America has how many? Female heads of state? None. Uh, okay, you see what I'm saying? So let's let's there's a balance here, but when it comes to the oppressive history, it is very well known. It is not okay. It should have ended a long time ago. So by them taking off their hijab, it is a protest because you're supposed to have your hair covered. The Holy Quran says this the Bible too. Mm -hmm. Says have your hair covered or shave your hair off. That's in the Bible. So Chris, what scripture is that? Go read it. <laughs> but it's it's so it's a very deep ingrained thing because the religion is ingrained into the politics, it's ingrained into the schooling, it's it's really ingrained into it's a theocracy, it's really in there. So if you understand that that's the area that you live in, just understand exactly what the ramifications are. But I will say, when there is injustice, as the honorable Mr. Louis Farrakhan said, the world is in the condition that it is in because of the disrespect of the woman. Now, man, listen, that's profound. Now, I do want to speak on Malcolm, right, before we sure. have out of here. So, I think it's Muhammad Aziz and Khalil Islam, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They have been exonerated. Now, now that's after... Found not guilty, y'all, just so you know. Yes. Now, that's after you guys been telling us for decades. This is before I was born. That Let's ain't our work. <laughs> before I was born. Y'all been telling us that ain't our work. Mm-hmm. That's the government work. Mm -hmm. Now, now, now it's finally been proven that the Nation of Islam had nothing to do with it. Why do you think it took so long? And two, do you guys now feel a, a, a relief or do you feel like there's been too much damage done to the, I guess, to the brand? I'll just say it this way. If you believe this U.S. government, go ahead. I really don't care. 
because the people in the hood know for the vast majority. When people get on these platforms and they talk, my only question is, where are you from? Because when you go into inner cities, you see us there. We may not be on every single corner because you're talking about millions and hundreds of millions of people. Come on, you know, so we, we do our best with the numbers that we have. But if you believe that lie, even after these brothers being exonerated, even after Dick Gregory told you that the government was going to get Malcolm and he told Malcolm the day it happened, he got on the phone with him. He said, I'm not going to be there because I know today the U.S. government is going to get you. Even after his daughter said that the members who shot my father, uh, specifically Ilyasa Shabazz, she said the members, there were not members of the Nation of Islam who shot my father. Even after Raymond Wood, an undercover NYPD agent just last year, confessed on his deathbed and gave the letter to his cousin, I believe brother or cousin, gave it to him where he said that we killed Malcolm, Raymond Wood. If you don't know who that is, it, it all continues to come out. However, people say, well, the nation was responsible. The U.S. government, the FBI, had agents, not just Eugene Roberts, but Raymond Wood as well. Malcolm was, he had so many agents around him to where it's like, you don't want to believe the U.S. government did it because you don't want no smoke with them. You want smoke with your own people. See, it's easy to beat up on a black man all day long if you're a black man. Yeah, nigga, da, 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 da. do that to the police officer. Mm -hmm. See, see, now wait a minute. See, now again, you gangster. You real gangster when it comes to attacking your own people. But when it comes to a group that is continually, and I'm not advocating for beating up white folk, I'm saying someone who is doing evil deeds towards you for no reason, attacking you, Billy Club beside your head, gun, punching you, whatever, throwing you in the car for no reason, you won't defend yourself. Because you, you really, you really don't think you are worthy of being respected. But when it comes to a black man, yeah, that's that nigga right there. Terrifying. See, that disgusting hypocrisy right there is why a lot of us have not moved forward. Because if they witness and recognize, you can't mess with our people. All right. If we did something wrong, OK, we have some of the consequences. Sure. If I did that, and OK, and I did that. But if I did not do that and you're mistreating me. For no reason, then I have the right to defend myself. That's the law of nature. Absolutely. So when it comes to the whole Malcolm story, you can believe it. Because some of you are not even worthy to fight back because you don't want to. You don't. That's the fact. I'm not interested in people talking about guns. Knock it off. The stuff you got is knockoffs. Let's make this clear. All the guns y'all got is knockoffs. If you don't believe in God and you believe in a gun more than God, that tells me all I need to know. And this is out of love. So people believe the Malcolm thing. There are too many books. There are too many documentaries. There are too many confessions. There are too many people who have already said no, 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 no. It wasn't the nation. No, no, no. Eugene Roberts, Raymond Wood, uh, the documentary on who killed Malcolm was actually pretty decent. It was pretty decent. Um, I recommend you watch Demetric Muhammad on who killed Malcolm X. I recommend you watch Dr. Wesley Muhammad on who killed Malcolm X. And I'm saying you have to have the attention span to go into this because the documents have been released. There's hundreds of pages of this. So if you really want to know, then go ahead and watch those different videos from the people that I have mentioned. Also with Minister Farrakhan uh, with who killed Malcolm X or Malcolm X, what really happened, where he goes over and where he continues to tell the U.S. government, open up the files. Mm -hmm. He said it. Open them up. And show the people who really did it. You know why they didn't want to open up the files publicly? Because they knew who did it. They knew yeah. who did it. And they helped to sponsor it. So I don't really get worked up too much about that. It's just really embarrassing. I'm 32 years old, bro. Yeah. That happened before I was born. Yeah. Years before I was born. Now, oh, sorry. You know, so yeah, it's kind of it's kind of embarrassing. Kind of like, okay, y'all, men, women, and children to this day, we all kill Malcolm X. If y'all don't knock this off at this point, stop it. The Nation of Islam has resurrected more lives than anybody you can name. To date, at this point in America, second to the Garvey movement, but right next to that, Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad, Nation of Islam. So, so at this point, it's kind of like, give credit where it's due for the good work that's being done. If you want to talk about Malcolm, then maybe you should start eating one meal a day. You want to say you love Malcolm? Stop messing around with white women. Sorry, Adam. Just what this is. <laughs> More Malcolm X. Right. <laughs> just Malcolm X. If you say you love Malcolm X and all that, okay, stop smoking weed because you're talking about Malcolm Little, not Malcolm X. Stop drinking alcohol because he didn't do that. Stop doing what you're doing, all these things that go against what he was believing in and what he was doing, because then you can sincerely say you love Malcolm X. If you're doing any one of them things or more, then your love is false. And I have to say that. Knock it off. Because it's, it's a, there's a separation here. You say you love the person because he's gone. Farrakhan been here and you ain't listening to nothing right now. 
Do you, do you see do you what I'm saying? Is, it's, it's, it's because because too many people don't want to be held accountable. You don't want to change. You don't want to do right. You want to point fingers at everybody else. White man, government, you over there. But you don't want to sit down and say, wait a minute, what am I doing to contribute to the perpetuation of the degradation of my people? What am I doing? You know what? I ain't going to lie, man. I was one of the people that actually thought the nation killed uh, Malcolm X. I'm <laughs> not even going to lie. I'm like, until <laughs> I, you know, I... St- I am shout out to my homie Secure. Um, he let me look at this video, uh, Hidden Colors that Tyreek did, Tyreek oh, yeah. Nasheed did, and that Brilliant that brother. volume yeah. one that really lo- it made me really love black people. Then yeah. I really I start going, you know, I start you know uh, looking more into five percenters. Then I start looking more into you know your videos and you know, and I'm like, damn, I really I I mean we really need to be educated on this shit. Like like how do we educate our people on this shit? How do we need, you know saying get educated on financial literacy? I'm like, on, damn, bro. I've been missing so much shit. Mm-hmm. Like as a black man, I'm like, why are we not being taught this shit? You feel me? Like how did I just how how did I even get like even as mm-hmm. a black man and black boy in school, high school, junior high, like mm-hmm. who the fuck led me to you know what I'm saying to <laughs> to to understand that the the nation killed this man? Like who? Bro. Like how did I get you know what I'm saying? Like how did they make me believe it and get brainwashed so early in the game? Because you know? that will happen right there. That is so crazy. That's why they had to convince you because that right there what you just went through will happen yes. you start to wake up it's a trap that's it then they can't control you but mind you again if you believe it hey go ahead and believe it all power to you pitiful sad but go ahead believe it um but if you want to do something to help your people maybe we should focus on that mm-hmm. because that's where we are right now so it's kind of like i don't really necessarily care if you believe it or not we're in a position where we need to change our condition right now that's that's where it is for me personally there's a, a term that flacco has been using around the office that's been a little controversial it's basically a combination of the n-word and like the end of termite you, you want to say it clearly i'm not gonna say it all right so pretty much i'll break it down right <laughs> very controversial around <laughs> okay, the office yeah. i mean I'll break it down. let me see how you how you make this into a compound word but go ahead so the term is negro mike so pretty much that's just a colloquial term that i came up with <laughs> for hooligans and delinquents. Negro might. Yes. Okay. <laughs> right? Hooligans, you know, again, though. No. It's kind of weird because, like, it seems offensive to me, but also it's like, am I supposed to be the one telling him nah, that's not uh, what to no, say? No, and I don't no. know. It's, it's nah, a weird spot nah, for man. me. Listen, man. Define it again. Joke. It's Negro might, right? Mm-hmm. It's just a term, right, to describe the hooligans and delinquents. You feel me? Okay. You, you know, you know, that's it, man. No, but, but, I do okay. have another question for you, though, man. Yes, yes. Before he even says anything about it. Come on, we want to hear oh. Is that appropriate for this office <laughs> right, You see, I try yeah. to an answer, but, but, but go past that. I need a ruling. Okay, I'll just say. You need a ruling. Yeah. You need okay. a ruling for that a powerful was, black man. That was interesting. Uh, yeah. Negro might. Uh, okay. The government's translation of that is black identity extremists, BIEs, mm. the delinquents of black people. That's the U.S., that's the FBI's classification. Those of us who care about our people, you know, embrace our identity. Yeah. That's the equivalent. I don't think we need another term for the hooligans and the bro. I'm, I'm just, that's just me. Yeah. But I mean, if that's how you want to identify them for you, yeah. all right. I mean, we, we just need to help our people. That's really where I'm at with it. But equal. Somebody I, mailed him I, a I rotisserie agree, chicken in the mail with, with that yeah. word written on as the return address. Yeah. You're going to get some flack for that. Oh, oh, yeah, big, big question. Big question. How do you feel about interracial relationships? Mm. The, the Umar, huh? Yeah, 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 okay, yeah. So. yeah. I mean, because my powerful brothers, they be on the same thing you own. So yes, I'm just like, how are they not? Is it maybe a religious thing? Like, how are they? Because his the girls have white, so he's mm-hmm. he's kind of mixed up. He's like, I don't know how to feel. I mean, I'm gonna just Most say the percentage is higher. She black. Oh, okay. <laughs> Smaller <laughs> percentage well, white. Fifteen okay. percent <laughs> German, <laughs> yeah. but sixty percent Liberian. Like, yeah. <laughs> crazy. No, um, I I don't necessarily advocate for it only because. We were not able to love our woman. Okay, now a lot of people are like, man, now it's the past. Okay, well, let me let me help you to understand this, bro. Um, I love us so deeply mm-hmm. that I want to see the fullness of myself in my posterity and my child. Mm-hmm. That's all. Now, do you want to go be with somebody who's white? That's up to you. Live your life. Me, I don't. There's nothing that a white woman can offer me. I'm sorry. Like, you, mm-hmm. you don't, you will not be able to identify with me. My experience, where I'm at mentally, you're, you're not there. My mama was a black woman. See, I, I love us so deep. No one can convince me. I done had some white women try to come at me. Trust and believe. Sell you some incense? Yeah. <laughs> and some sage and everything. I was like, 
That okay, yeah, look, I was like, okay, some sage incense you know, and some, some shea butter, and you yeah. think, <laughs> come on, Kathy, stop it, you know, <laughs> stop it, <laughs> stop it. Um, I respect Kathy. the hustle, but stop that. Um, I I just I just love us, bro. I mean, and it's really that simple for me. I don't have to go into the Caucasoid, Mongoloid. I uh, <laughs> I don't have to go into that. I just I really love us, bro. Like I I'm, I grew up with my siblings. I'm from Compton. I have nine siblings. I'm the youngest of ten children. Mm-hmm. I don't watch what happened to our people. I owe it to the black woman to be with her. That's me. Now, if you want to go be with somebody else, cool, and say, well, look, it's just what I feel, blah, blah, blah. No, the majority of you have trauma because of experiences you have, negative experiences with black women, certain individuals, whether it's child support, be uh, abandoned, whatever it is. We have to address our mental stability first before we make a decision. You're running because you got pain. And you don't want to face it. And the moment you face it, now you got to take responsibility because now you can't generalize all black women. Why? Because all black women ain't did a damn thing to you. Just like all black men ain't did everything to black women. Niggas ain't this. Hoes ain't. Wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. You haven't met all black men. You haven't met all black women. So we should stop generalizing each other. That makes no sense. Every other group of people, they promote being with their own, but they just don't say it. They show it. That's all. Chinese, cool with being with a Chinese man and woman. Indians with Indians. Australians, Australians nine times out of ten. But they don't talk about it because everyone wants to attack black, benefit from black, be a vulture to black, music, dancing, bodies, whatever it is. We want that. But they always are trying to push this thing. Be multicultural. No. Go to hell. Sorry. Not mm-hmm. sorry. How dare you promote to me to be with somebody else? How dare you? Why don't you say, Reese, you know what? I'm happy you love a black woman. Why don't you do that? Why don't, why? Is that wrong? But you promote Becky to me. But how do you feel about the, the common thing that we see black women saying on Twitter and shit where they basically feel like black men get successful and then date white women or Asian women and step outside their race? It is a reality that a lot of brothers, you got to you gotta, you gotta handle yourself. I'll say this again. Mm-hmm. Without a vision of people perish and without the proper knowledge, people make wrong decisions. You're going and making decisions based off of where you are now. Where you are now, mentally, spiritually, emotionally. Well, I grew up with it. That happens too. I grew up with stupid children. Okay, that happens. Like there are different. See, the thing is, it is a reality where a lot of brothers get successful. You get a little bit of money and then you start getting rich and you go up there. You get your contract, sign a party, NBA, etc. And this white girl comes up and starts finishing your sentences. She knows so much about you all of a sudden. You really <laughs> think that she wasn't sent? So let me say this, bro. Some of us are so damn naive that you think all of a sudden all these women just interested in you. Mm. I'm just saying specifically for those. Yes. You wasn't interesting before to them. Now you get money and some fame. Now they're interested. Please look at that. Then go to the other side and look at, wait a minute. You have family and friends that you grew up with. Who was there with you? Who was always down for you? Look at them. Okay. Let's, like, let's, let's look at this in layers. And if you do get successful, just say it's because that's the person you want to be with and don't generalize all black women and say it's because of y'all. No, 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 no. That's where a lot of brothers start getting that heat hmm. because they get with the white girl and it's like, that's fine. But then they compare her to the black women generally and it's like, oh, just say because that's what's best for you. But don't generalize all the black women, bro, because if you want to go historically and up to the present, the white woman was worse than the white man when it came to black men. Let's make that very clear. That's why I'm not going to. I'm just being real, Adam. We're going we're gonna to talk. All right. We're going to talk. Damn it. I know you cool. We're going to talk. Listen, I, we, we have a we lot of talk. OnlyFans chicks on here, and I had a lot of chicks tell me that they got no interest in a penis unless it's got some melanin in it. Hey. Like, that's just where it is for them. Like White dick is out of style. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh man, you out of style, dog. No, I'm, I, I'm still cool, but the, like the average, you know. Adam said, oh, dude, I'll not me, the other white guys. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> no, but it's it's yeah. real. It, it's see, a, yeah. it's a real thing. So and vice versa, brothers. Just we just have to stop generalizing. That that's all. If you get with who you get with, say it's because that's what you wanted or who you wanted. Fine. Later on, when you start to identify yourself and you start to go back and reflect and you start to learn about yourself, go back to your traumas and address them, you will change. In whatever way that is, you will grow. As you said, there's certain things you started learning that you were you got mad, mind blown that you didn't know, or you was lied to, or you're like, how you didn't tell me? This is what happens to all of us. One so, thing stuck out was Mansa Musa. Oh, I let, come on. I stopped watching. I paused it. Come on, I'm brother. Like, what? You're like, that can't be real. That can't be real. Mansa Musa, King of Mali, richest man to ever live. The one who they fashioned King T'Challa of Black Panther after. He was the richest human being to ever live. King T'Challa in the comic books worth $90 trillion, more than Iron Man, more than Batman, you name it, etc. Richest person on the planet Earth. 
King T'Challa. I can't count Jeff Bezos and the rest of them because it's with fiat money for the for the most yeah. part. Uh, <laughs> just to be clear, with the whole white thing, if you hate me, which I know you don't, um, I, I'm I'm marrying a black woman mm -hmm. because that's what I want. We don't advocate for it because, again, we were not allowed to really love that woman. They would sell her to another plantation. They would whip her. They would whip us. They would tar and feather us. They would sell our children to another plantation. Even later on into the early 1900s, if I showed love and interest to a black woman, I got beat up. A lot of different things happened. When the families worked together, the women's liberation movement came in because she needed more numbers, so she recruited the black woman for it. It had nothing to do with us. We were fighting for civil rights as black men, women, children, and families to be treated as human beings. You wanted to get some rights against and away from your white man. So you came and convinced the black woman to join your movement. I ain't mad at you. The problem is too many sisters joined <laughs> because it went against the primary goal, which, for, which was for us to have equal rights and for us to be treated as human beings. That was the issue. So at this point, that wasn't too long ago. I love my people far too much. I love the black woman. There is nothing better than the black woman. Uh, but yeah. women should be respected no matter what color you are. And if you choose to be with a woman of whatever color, culture, persuasion, that's your choice. Just do not try to swing over here and tell me who I should be with when it comes to being with the black woman. That's shout awesome. out to all our celibate brothers like Poetic Fuck yeah. out here. <laughs> nah, right. So, so like they've been on me for not dating or, or you know, or really liking you know white women. But <laughs> no, that's not why but, we're on you. But but uh, past that though, right? Adam slid that in there yeah. real <laughs> smooth. Nobody gives a shit about that. <laughs> past that though, let's talk about the book, man. Yes, sir. Yes. You feel me? So. I think we got like a live show coming up soon. You feel me? Like in like five minutes. But let's gotcha. talk talk about the book. Oh, also too, before the book, there's this one saying that people use to discredit the nation, mm -hmm. right? And they say like they have repeated the saying of the synagogue of Satan a lot. Oh, that's that's a, a quote from the Bible. Yeah. Yeah, Revelations 2 and 9, Revelations 3 and 9. Yeah. So just break it down. Like what does that mean? Could mm -hmm. people take that as anti-Semitism? No, it's, it's the same thing as saying people who claim to be Muslim and they do evil things. Same mm. thing a person who claims to be a Christian. They do evil things that violate the principles of Christianity, violate the principles of Islam. You're using this name, saying that you are this, and you do things that violate what you say and what that really is. So uh, when you say synagogue of Satan, that was Jesus in the Bible. Didn't Jay Electronica get in trouble for saying that? Yes. Yeah, with, a, lot of, a lot of people. With Rosenberg. Yeah. Right, yeah, yeah but see, yeah. I'll say this. Minister Farrakhan has been asking to have a sit down publicly with the leaders of the Jewish community. He's had plenty private. They've, they've met with him. I mean, tons of them have met with him in private at his home. Really? But not in public. Because there is this weird, inordinate type of control that certain individuals want to maintain when it's like, well, okay, how about we sit down and have a dialogue? Like, let's sit down and talk. And we find out what we have in common and what we don't agree with, etc. Just lay it out on the table. Let's have a discussion. I don't want any Jewish person to be killed. I don't want a Muslim person to be killed. I don't want a Christian to be killed. I'm not interested in none of that, none of that kind of stuff. There's no record of anybody in the nation of Islam harming a Jewish person at all, unless it's in self-defense. Mm -hmm. So it's like, what are you talking about? Synagogue of Satan is a term that comes out of the Bible when Jesus was talking to them, when they called him a bastard. And he said, oh, I know you. You are of your father, the devil. And the lust of your father you shall do, etc. He was a murderer from the beginning. Revelations 2 and 9, Revelations 3 and 9. That's the Bible. We didn't write it. Sorry. That's, that's that. Um, and so that's what is quoted when you're talking about people who have control over modern media and banking, etc. And they happen to call themselves Jewish. Mm. Mm. Same thing with people who do the same thing, happen to call themselves Muslim happen to call themselves Christian, etc. But they exercise this evil, wicked stuff. The sex trafficking by a lot of Muslims. Mm-hmm. That's not that's the practice of dirty religion, bro. But I'm not called anti-Islamic if I point that out. Mm. If I call out a black man for another black man, I'm not called anti-black. See what I'm saying? Yeah. Knock it off. Like, really what? knock it off. And I'll, I'll just mention one thing that you may have brought up. The disinformation doesn't how the U.S. government came at your brother. Yeah. It put me on a list of 12 people. And they said these 12 people are the number one group of people who have the majority of influence on the Internet as it pertains to the shots and CV-19. <sighs> So they put Reza Islam on a list of 12, Woo! quoted at the White House, Sheesh. and they said these 12 people are the most dangerous when it comes to this, and they spread the most misinformation, which so far we have been exonerated in virtually every single thing that we have stated. What's going to happen has happened. Everything that we warned the people about has come true from Minister Farrakhan all the way down. It has been turned out now to be true. And now what's happening is the government is starting to have to 
reverse all the things that they were putting on the people. Of course. I, now, I get to the... Oh, sorry. <laughs> I mean, he, he was one of the people that misinformed us too about the vaccination. I just, right. not, <laughs> not, we don't got enough time in the podcast. Nah, we do. Sorry, no, that's no, why I brought it up no, at the end. No, no, we no, I brought it up no. at the end, but I, I just wanted you. to read that up. That's not even get him. Shout out to all my boosted brothers out there, man. Might want to hit him in the arm again. I'm in my seventh booster. I'm almost dying. I'll be with you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, the book is message to millennials so yes. first off why was it important to speak to the youth number one i actually spelled it differently if you notice there mm. because that millennial is focusing on the strongest of the strong the strongest within 1000 so for example the bible talks about 144,000. Um, it talks about those who are coming at the head of the legions or 12 legions etc meaning the people who are going to stand on the front line to fight against satan so i wrote that to speak to all of those regardless of age who are going to stand up against the evil and wicked agendas of Satan in this system, period. Black, white, all in between. Um, it's not a religious book. It's not a, you know, it's a lot of black centered, of course, but it's speaking to those who seek truth, who seek the real information of what's going on, how this enemy is, is suppressing and oppressing the masses of humanity, all of that. That's why I said message to the millennials and it was inspired by message to the black man by the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. Now, like, what can people expect after reading this? Like, what can they, <laughs> you know, gain from it? Just like our brother Trail said, chapter six on depopulation. When you read that, you are going to be mad that you did not know it before. <laughs> this came out at the end of 2019. Chapter two on social media. I have not read a book yet that covers social media from beginning to end. All of those different things. For people who read that, they really going to be mad also. Like, I wish I would have known all of this stuff. You have a chapter over that goes over tell lie vision programming. Programming you visually by telling you lies. It goes over the six corporations that own media. What happens with them? How much money do they make? Uh, what movie theaters are really for? All that kind of stuff. Uh, there's so much that I cover in there. It goes over, not only, like I said, depopulation. It goes over the college educated versus the autodidact. People with degrees versus people who are self-taught, self-studied, self-learned. I have no degrees. But as, you, as we sit here and talk, most people would, would, would assume... That I may have one, but I don't. So yeah. there's so much in this book that, like I said, it's now banned from certain prisons, even though it, it oh, was wow. there before. Wow. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, they they like <laughs> hell no, no. <laughs> they got this out of there. Can we fast, can we right? make this in video form? Because I'm like yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm like, doing audio. Yeah, I ain't now. read no book. Uh, I'm with you. I'm with you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, don't let no. That's an honest question. <laughs> See how you do it, man. <laughs> we need to. This need to be real. I'm you know finishing up the audio, bro. I'm finishing up the audio book. Yeah. Just just for that. Seriously, because a lot of people driving, we're working out, you know, shout out to my truckers. A lot of people who do things where they can't sit down and read. I get that. So I'm finishing up the audio just for that. Okay. Man. All right. Definitely. Appreciate you coming on, man. We got to uh, get out of here so they can do their live show. You Absolutely. got to come back soon, man. <laughs> right. <laughs> Whenever Please. you invite me, my brother, I'm out here. Reasislam.com for the book. Just so y'all know, Reasislam.com. Definitely. Thank you so yes, much sir. for your time. Thank you to Flacco and T-Rail for, uh, you for holding it down. Definitely. Appreciate you, man. Reza Appreciate Islam. Man. No Jumper, coolest podcast in the world. Check us out on YouTube, TikTok, Patreon, etc. Yes, like, sir. comment, and subscribe. Nojumper.com if you want to support. Wow. <laughs> Boom.